Lyme disease in Europe. How to check whether you are infected with Lyme disease using a microscope by Peter Travis. This is my blood as seen in my microscope. It is live blood and has been filmed with a camera. You can see the Lyme bacterium. It is a thin hair-like structure. It waves gently. It stretches from the top of the picture to just above the center of the picture. At the lowest end of the bacteria is a hook. This hook is characteristic of the Lyme bacterium. It turns this way and that. On the right are two red blood cells which do not move. Around these red blood cells are short bacteria which are constantly moving. This is the microscope I use with the phase contrast technique and the dark field technique. I obtain a magnification of 2400, which is enough to see the Borrelia bacterium. These are two adult ticks. Some ticks carry Borrelia bacteria, some don't. The larger one is 5 millimeters long. The tick sucks blood, doesn't pump blood into you, and you would think the bacteria in the tick would stay there. However, the saliva of the tick contains an anticoagulant to stop the blood from thickening, and a local anesthetic so that the victim does not feel the bite. The Borrelia bacteria enter with the saliva into the victim's bloodstream. The saliva also combines with the surface of the bacteria to protect it against the immune defenses of the victim and is not merely a carrier. The bite mark that the Lyme tick leaves can look like this or like this, or like this. These are what are called bull's eye marks. The tick may also just leave a small black or red pinhead mark. Once in the bloodstream, Lyme bacteria move through your body to infect any part of it. If you have taken antibiotics, but taken them too late or for too short a time, then the bacteria may move through the part of the body which the antibiotics have not reached, which is the peripheral blood system below the skin. Then you may get marks like this as the Lyme bacteria travel through the skin. These marks disappear but leave a scar behind so that large areas of skin no longer function as normal skin but as scar tissue. If you are not treated for Lyme disease then you may get a very bad skin and nail infection which finally kills the entire layer of collagen below the skin and nail. This invasion looks like this to start with and is often mistaken by both patient and doctor as a fungal infection of the toes. In fact, the bacteria enter the collagen layer below the nail so that the nail ceases to grow outwards but appears to grow upwards. The collagen layer below the nail is being invaded and deadened by the bacteria so that atrophied collagen is accumulating. This spreads over the foot without treatment and the skin looks like cigarette paper and can in fact be torn off in thin strips. The disease then progresses so the foot can look like this. This skin is entirely dead or atrophied 
and will never recover. The condition is most painful and can lead to inability to use the foot. You cannot then walk. A side effect of this is that the foot ceases to grow normally and instead spreads so that the foot is eventually one size smaller in length than the other foot and very wide. It becomes hard to find shoes that fit. These conditions are usual with those infected with the Borrelia afsalii bacterium which is one of the three types of Borrelia bacterium present throughout Europe. Ticks are readily picked up by dogs. It is hard to find a tick on a dog and a Borreliosis infection is often overlooked until the dog begins to go lame. Dogs act as reservoirs in municipal parks where there are no wild animals, as do humans. The nervous system may also be infected, and this is usually caused by the Borrelia guarini bacterium, which is another of the European Borrelia bacteria types. The third type is Borrelia burgdorferi, which is the least common in Europe, but the only type in North America. The nerves of one side of the f neck and face may be affected. This may cause a very severe migraine-like one-sided headache. It may also cause the facial nerves to be partially paralyzed on one side, creating a snide-looking smile. The shoulder may droop so the body is turned, thus creating tension in the pelvis. This in turn may cause pain in the perineum, which is in the area between your legs, or pain in the testicles. The urogenital system may be directly invaded by the bacteria. If the esophagus or mouth of the stomach is affected, then this valve may cease to function. Reflux or cancer may result. These are only some of the many conditions suffered often without a correct diagnosis.